Welcome to another lively edition of The Deadly Experiment, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, Rick Adams, your producer and host for this program that has been in its 15th year now on public access television in the state of Rhode Island and uh, on YouTube for the last several years. Uh, we have our channel, The Deadly Experiment. Rick Adams uncensored after my radio program on Republic Broadcasting Network and uh, The Deadly Experiment. It'll bring it up. It'll bring up the uh, channel and you can subscribe or you can just uh, ignore it, whatever you want to do. But we're here for a reason, folks. I've been sick in the past. I uh, came close to uh, winding up dead and yet God resurrected me for a reason because my time had not yet come and he needs this ministry to get out the word in these last days. It's a wonderful thing to know God and his his healing, his incredible power. He is omnipotent, he's omnipresent, and he's omniscient. The three O's. So just remember that when you think you're going to challenge God, you're not going to get away with it. God protected Elijah from the ravens, from the evil ravens, feeding him with the good ravens. And uh, he actually brought forth judgment upon uh, the 400 gods of Baal, those who uh, could not bring down fire from heaven to light the wood. But he could, after he soaked the wood with water, <laughs> God brought forth that flame and the wood burned. You see, God is the God of gods, and he doesn't like competition. He doesn't like false gods. What have we done in America, this Christian nation? We brought into it false gods, pagan gods, lesser gods. We brought in Christmas. We brought in Easter of all things. Christmas has a good meaning. It's supposed to be the birth of Christ, but the Bible makes it clear that Christ was not born in the winter. He was not born on December 25th. He was conceived of in Mary's womb at that time by the Holy Spirit. But he was not born until nine months later, which would put it the Feast of Tabernacles that we celebrate as we do the Passover of Christ, because he is our Passover lamb, in the late part of September, September 30th, more or less. That's when he of course, was physically born. A lot of people don't know that, but it comes right from the Gospels in uh, John, when he was in his mother's belly, uh, John the Baptist. So anyway, without getting distracted, folks, the purpose of today's program is to show you that America is the Israel of God. After the final captivity, going back a couple of thousand years or so, um, and what happened, particularly in Assyria under King Sennacherib, where the tribes of Israel finally, after a couple hundred years in captivity for their sinfulness, were let go. And they did proceed forth en masse, traveling over the Caucasus Mountains. Therefore, they would be known as Caucasians, Caucasian Israel. They traveled north over those mountains, north, and they came to Europe. They came to America ultimately. They went to Australia. They went to New Zealand. All of these nations, the tribes of true Israel, not fake Israel, not that which calls itself Israel and is not, but it is a lie and a hoax. And that's why Jesus denounced the evil fig tree in Matthew 24 and in Mark 13. He tells us what's coming and how we will be persecuted. Delivered up before Satan in Mark 13 to witness to the false Messiah. So what's this rapture theory? That the church, quote unquote, is going to be gone. That's the biggest lie since the other lies of the scriptures, the Jews are Judah. They are not. And the rapture is not. Just get that straight. If you're waiting for a rapture, you're going to have a long wait, my friends. You might get a rupture, but you will not get a rapture. That's for darn sure. So on today's program, from a secular yet gospel-oriented approach, we're going to go back in history. We're going to go back to like 1964 or 5, when uh, a man, a constitutional scholar by the name of Dan Smoot, was doing his gig on television. Some of you might remember him when you were growing up, seeing the Dan Smoot report on television, buying time to uh, have a 15-minute block on television stations across America to bring forth the truth, to bypass this corrupt media once again. 
so that people could understand the truth of the word of God, the word of political and economic and historical truth. Where did America really come from? Well, the Bible tells us in Isaiah that the Israelite people would have a new land, a new nation, a new language, a new custom, different. It would be called the New Jerusalem. And where was it? Ultimately, here in America, the New Jerusalem. Folks, it's all there in the book of Isaiah. It's there in other Bible uh, verses in the Old Covenant, more so than anything. The Old Covenant tells us more about prophecy, tells us more about things to come, particularly the millennium, than the New Covenant does. So remember that. When people say America is not mentioned in Bible prophecy, but Israel is, who do you think Israel is? The true Israel in the flesh. It's those of the Caucasian race of people. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Jacob had 12 sons, the 12 sons of Jacob. And we see where they went, to Norway, to France, to Italy, to Germany, of course, to Scotland and England, the birthright tribes. Joseph's sons, Ephraim in England and Manasseh here in the United States. Manasseh means forgetful. You realize that? Forgetful. They don't know who they are. We don't know who we are today, but we do know that the synagogue of Satan, which calls itself Israel and calls itself Judah, are not the true tribes of Israel. If they were, they'd behave like Israelites. They wouldn't kill and murder and maim and destroy and steal and rape and plunder and loot, would they? No, they would not. True Israelites, as Jesus said, you will know them by their fruits when they obey my word. If they have bad fruit. They're not of my sheep. Good fruits, yes, they are of God. For I have come forth from God. I am the Son of God. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Get it now? Wonderful. It's nice to know the truth because the truth, as it says in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 32, shall make you free. Jesus spoke that to the Pharisees, who were of that lineage of Cain and that evil seed line. And they said, we've never been in bondage to any man. We've been free to roam the earth. Well, they revealed themselves, didn't they? Because the children of the Hebrews or the Israelites always were in bondage. They were in bondage in Egypt. They were in bondage in Assyria. They were bondage in bondage in ba Babylon. They were in bondage in Greece. They were in, in bondage in Medo-Persia and in Rome and so on and so forth. Now we're at the end of the road. The final bondage is going to be a worldwide Babylonian captivity. And who's running the prison camp? Those who say they are of God and of Judah and of Israel, but are not and do lie and are of the synagogue of Satan. This man, Dan Smoot, a brilliant man, a brilliant constitutionalist, came to us from the FBI, left the Bureau in like 1950 or so to form the Dan Smoot Report to warn Americans of what would befall this nation. But in the meantime, this was during the Johnson administration, Lyndon Johnson, when he was talking about the new Roosevelt, the great society and what America became as opposed to what it was and why we're done, why we're just about at the end now, folks. Let's watch the Dan Smoot Report, America's Promise from the 1965 Era. America's Promise. To President Johnson, a great society means government-guaranteed material prosperity and universal equality as defined and enforced by government. To the American Founding Fathers, a great society meant a political system which left people free to follow their own destinies with God's help. Not a nation devoted to the ideal of the common man, but a place where a man could become uncommon without a government to harass him and hold him down to a common level. America was founded and built into the greatest nation of all times by men who established a constitutional system of limited government to guarantee personal freedom. By men who, firm in their faith in God, spoke with divine authority when they said to their own government, Thou shalt not abridge these freedoms which God has given us. Government shall not. That was the promise of America. That is a summary of my report on America's promise. The full report after a message from my sponsor. To 
President Lyndon B. Johnson, a great society means government provided housing, government guaranteed medical care, government financed education, government stabilized agriculture, government subsidized arts, government controlled industry, government regulated jobs, government created material prosperity, and universal equality as defined and enforced by government. To the American founding fathers, a great society meant the direct opposite. It meant a political system which left people free to follow their own destinies with God's help. The promise of America is obvious to anyone who knows her early history, knows enough about the founding fathers to understand their lives and their ideals. But the teeming millions from Europe who glutted our eastern ports of entry and pushed across the continent to the Pacific in the 19th century, they, for the most part, were ignorant of the details of American history. What was the promise of America to them? A promise of fertile land, cheap and abundant? A promise of great deposits of natural resources? A promise of good climate? There have always been other places with greater natural resources, with climate as good or better, and with land more fertile and plentiful than in the United States of America. Those American pioneers who pushed through gaps in the mountains, driving westward with blue vistas of hope and adventure in their eyes, were they in quest of social security or some kind of government guaranteed existence? Were they yearning for the fat and easy life? Were they bound for the land of the common man? Most of them were common men in the general evaluation of the world. Most of them were poor and would have welcomed abundance. They all were human and would have been glad to be spared hardship and arduous labor. But these were not the things they sought in the new world. They expected and they encountered more hardship and harsh toil in the raw American wilderness than they had left behind in Europe. They were looking for a place where a common man could, God willing, become uncommon. Where a man could become whatever his vision, his faith, his energy, his intellect, and his manhood combined to make him without a government to harass him and hold him down to a common level for the benefit of the general welfare. In short, the promise of America was freedom. Today, a whole generation of Americans have been educated to believe that freedom means ease and comfort. Freedom is not a soft way of life, but it is the only noble way for creatures made in the image of God. When man is left free to struggle, he develops strength and wisdom by struggling. When forced into dependence upon government, he becomes a dependent personality, flabby and irresolute, with no will, courage, or personal convictions. A free man can dream and will dare to enter what Job called the warfare of life, to capture his dreams and transform them into reality. A dependent personality has no dream of conquering anything. He has instead greed. Greed to get all he can for himself not by constructive effort, but by continuing demands upon the power which made him dependent. There are many hazards in a free society. One hazard is that there will always be people who will not manage their own affairs as well as they should, or as well as someone else thinks they should. But when you start passing laws to force people to do all the things that someone else thinks good for them, you are headed for a slave society. The early American patriots had a deep suspicion of all government, including the one they created. They knew that the worst threat to a man's life, liberty, and property is the government under which he lives. They knew that all governments will, if permitted, waste the labors of the people and ultimately enslave the people, always under the pretense of taking care of the people. Modern liberals are not suspicious of government. They worship government. They want to set government up as a kind of big brother deity to look after us and run our lives for us. Modern liberals presume that you, an individual, if left to your own devices and resources, do not have enough decency, ability, or good sense to educate your own children, provide your own housing, prepare for your own future, or help a neighbor in desperate need. Therefore, liberals want laws which will force you to do all things that liberals think you should do. They take money away from you and put it in a big federal pot on the presumption that politicians and bureaucrats will make better use of your money than you would. But remember, politicians and bureaucrats are themselves individuals. As individuals, they, according to their own liberal philosophy, are incapable of managing their own affairs. Once vested with political power, they are presumably transfigured and transformed, 
automatically injected with enough ability to manage the affairs of the world. In short, modern, liberal, modern liberalism rests on the assumption that political power makes men wiser than God. As philosophies of government, modern liberalism, communism, and fascism are all essentially the same. Each believes that government should have absolute power to promote the general welfare. The trouble here is that when government has absolute power to promote the general welfare, government must have absolute power to decide what the general welfare is. Why do communists murder people in nations they take over? Well, they're promoting the general welfare, as communists see it. The welfare state, with the usual trappings of government price controls, government fixed minimum wages, government subsidies, government relief for the poor, and government pensions, was tried out in ancient Babylon, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, in Mussolini's Italy, in Hitler's Germany, and in all communist countries. It has always failed to provide economic security and has always ended in tyranny. A government which can take a warm personal interest in one citizen can take a cold calculating interest in another. A government which can subsidize your farm or business or send you checks for unemployment or relief can also seize the bodies and property of your sons and daughters. Many Americans are pitifully confused in their efforts to defend Americanism against communism because they do not really know the difference. They have the leadership of modern liberalism to thank for this confusion. Using the police power of government to take from those who have for redistribution among those who have not is called by our liberals achieving economic justice through the processes of democracy. In communist countries, the same thing is called liquidation of capitalism through the dictatorship of the proletariat. What is the Americanism concept of helping the have-nots? Every American has an individual responsibility under God to help others in distress. But the decision as to when, how much, and to whom is legally and morally his and not his government's. Government cannot make men prosperous any more than it can make men good. Government cannot produce anything. It can merely seize and divide what individuals have produced. Government can give the people nothing which government has not first taken away from them. And the amount which government doles back to the people or spends to promote their welfare is always less than it takes. America is a fabulous country, a land where lofty mountains and deep rivers bear names that are music on the tongue, names rich in the lore and legend of marvelous and mysterious Indian tribes who prefer death to surrender. But America is more than poetry. It is a land where men know that morality, conscience, and happiness can be achieved only by individual effort with divine help. Where equality signifies the equal importance of individuals before God and before the law, but recognizes the infinite diversity of talents, tastes, ambitions, capacities, and material conditions as natural for free man and essential to the progress of human society. Where stern men, firm in their faith in God, speak with divine authority when they say to their own government, Thou shalt not abridge these freedoms which God has given us. I cringe when I hear an American praise the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights and insinuate that it is an extension of the American Bill of Rights. The United Nations Declaration of Human Rights is a blueprint for international socialism. It is a promise of all member nations that the force of government will be used to level and spread material benefits until everyone enjoys the same kind of sameness that characterizes a fine litter of fattening hogs. The American Bill of Rights, on the contrary, tells government what it must not do. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects shall not be violated. Government shall not. That is the American philosophy of liberty, which spread abroad and tugged at the hearts of men all over the earth. That was the promise of America. This is the 10th anniversary broadcast of the Dan Smoot Report. It is a revision of the first broadcast I made in this series 10 years ago. 
On this 10th anniversary of my broadcast, I have given you a brief of America's promise, my original broadcast, because I cherish a great truth expressed by George Mason, Mason, one of our founding fathers. George Mason said, no free government or the blessings of liberty can be preserved to any people but by a frequent recurrence to fundamental principles. That is why through the years I recur to the fundamental principles that form the bedrock of our society. Well, I hope that you have uh, learned something from the Dan Smoot Report. I know I have. Over the years, I was a follower of Dan Smoot in uh, the 1970s when I became acquainted with uh, bookstores that offered alternative independent media publishing, publishing you couldn't get in a college textbook, you couldn't get from the New York Times, heaven forbid, the truth, um, the Washington Post, L.A. Times, Houston Chronicle, Boston Globe, the Boston Herald, uh, un-American, as one man used to call it. So we had to educate ourselves. We had to get learned up, as they say, and learn the truth that will set us free spiritually, intellectually, morally, historically, and uh, in a scholarly way. So we would know who we are as a people and what God had intended for America for his people, true Israel, and how he uses the enemies of America to sap her strength, to destroy us. Who is behind uncontrolled, illegal so-called immigration, which is an invasion in Europe, in Australia, in America, and all of these countries that are Adamic, white, Caucasian, Israelite nations of the Bible? You understand? Isaac, what does Anglo-Saxon come from? Isaac's sons, the sons of Isaac, the son of Isaac, Jacob. Jacob have I loved, God said. Jacob, the father of the real tribes of true Israel who have become Caucasians. But Esau have I hated. Esau means red. Esau, Edom means red. Esau was the firstborn, and yet his brother came after him, Jacob, the heel grabber. And naturally, the firstborn would receive the blessings. He rejected them for a bowl of stew. That's what the Bible tells us. Esau, in Genesis chapter 25, verses 23 onward, we read of Esau being born and of Jacob being born, the twins, the brothers. Just like Cain and Abel, you see? Two opposites. One preferred the world and money and grubbery and greed and all of the avarice. The other preferred to come back to God. Not that Jacob has been perfect. America's sins and the sins of our people go way back. Wicked people, but always coming back to God when God cursed them with the curses. And we're being cursed today, America. The world is being cursed, but particularly our Adamic countries. The flood of illegals, flood of mongrelized races. Oh, it sounds so racist, doesn't it? Well, if you prefer to call God a racist, you go right ahead. You have to take the consequences when the time comes. But God does deal in race. He deals in ethnicities. And yes, he does love all that have been created by him. He doesn't hate one race over another. That's for sure. But he does offer salvation through Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, the Son of God, who was born for that reason, folks. So Dan Smoot makes a lot of sense. America was seduced just as Eve was seduced in the Garden of Eden. Only America was seduced not with the genitalia so much as with economic corruption political corruption, all the filthy, dirty politicians that you can, <laughs> you can count on your, on your, well, you can't count on your fingers or your toes, but certainly you can count up almost to infinity on a chalkboard, of course, today, on a tablet, on a cell phone. It's infinite, the number of people running for office who think they're going to change things for the better. And yet God says they can frustrate themselves in Psalm 2, I will hold them in derision the people in derision in David's time, King David, that they might be divided, they might be neighbor against neighbor, and they would wind up making absolutely no effect, no change, except for the worse. As Isaiah, in again, Isaiah, which talks about the land of 
great abundance between two large rivers or oceans, America slash Israel, the land of the blessed, and now the land of the cursed. We have to pay the price for our abandonment of Christianity. Sodomy is everywhere. Transgenderism is everywhere. Perversion of all sorts. Rejection of God's commandments. Most of all, being in bed with the Kenites who have murdered our people from 9-11 through all of these other major hoaxes and then real, real tragedies overseas, our troops being killed for that evil fig tree in Jerusalem. Well, God says you're going to have to suffer. Let them suffer. As we proved in World War II, in Isaiah again, chapter 9, the northern tribes of Israel fighting the southern tribes of Israel. America and England against Germany and, uh, and France and so forth. It's all repetitious, my folk. If you know the scriptures and you want to get into them and learn about what's coming, throw away your newspapers, throw away your TVs and all that garbage, the History Channel, all that nonsense. Get into the Word of God. He'll give you real history and real prophecy. And Dan Smoot did that. He showed you unequivocally that the Johnson administration began this so-called Great Society, which was not great nor good. And yet, Alexei de Tocqueville, the Frenchman, looked at America in the 1800s, around that time, and said, America is great. Why? He went to the political institutions. He went to all these other institutions. And then he went to the churches. And he says, America is great because she is good. And when America ceases to be good, she shall what? Cease to be great. Friends, does that sound familiar? Hark in your ears. I'm sorry to smash your little bubble. I think it's about time. History does repeat itself. Prophecy becomes history when it's fulfilled. America is in her last gasp of breath. And so is the rest of the world. Jerusalem, the city of Antichrist, will be the super state of control, not only physically, but in the mind. It's coming very soon. You better prepare for it. That's why they want your guns. That's why they want your, your independence. Whatever little you have left, they want everything you own. They want, most of all, for their father, your soul. I say that not jokingly or lightly. Scripture makes that clear. Satan wants the souls of men and women and children. Don't let him have them, because he's coming to Jerusalem shortly. Remember that, folks. The wars will come shortly with Russia, which is Esau today, Russia and America. You can see it forming now through Russia Gate and all of these fake probes. China also will emerge. Unfortunately, some of the men of the East, including Iran, will be brought in by the synagogue of Satan in Jerusalem. Be mindful. Rick Adams is telling you the truth from the Word of God. Until the next program, may God bless His elect and Yahweh bless them as well.